the tale of Zahak, the most cruel and unjust king. Based on Shahnameh, written by Ferdowsi. The story of Zahak begins with that of Jamshid, a legendary king who had led Iran magnanimously for 700 years and brought about peace and justice, civilization, sanitation and health, arts and splendor, joy and prosperity by the grace of God during his reign. Some philosophers like Vanucher Jamali propose that Jamshid's era represents a matriarch Iranian civilization dated around 10,000 years ago. But Jamshid's success eventually led to his pride and arrogance. He thus demanded to be recognized not only as the ruler of the world, but its creator or recreator. The arrogance marked Jamshid's downfall as God withdrew the fire or divinely granted royal grace, fortune and wisdom granted to him. Jamshid's fortune declined until Zahak appeared. Zahak was deceived by Ahriman or Satan to kill his father Merdas. Some mythologists and philosophers like Shahra Mehrafruz read Merdas as Mithras. Mithras, as you know, is the biggest deity in Mithraism. Anyway, Merdas in the story of Shahnameh is an Arab Mesopotamian nobleman. And Zahak, to acquire Merdas' fortune and power, kills him, while Ahriman assists him by digging a pit and covering it with leaves and branches in the garden where Merdas took a walk and prayed at dawn every morning. Merdas fell in the pit and died. Then Zahak became the ruler of Arabia or Mesopotamia. Then Ahriman appeared as a cook and presented Zahak, the new ruler, for three days with marvelous spreads of delicious, colorful dishes made of birds and animals. Some say this means that before Zahak, people were vegans. On the fourth day, Zahak, pleased with the cook, told him to ask for anything he desired. Having waited for the opportunity, Ahriman replied that he wished not nothing but Zahag's happiness and would be overjoyed if he was allowed to kiss the king's shoulders. Permission granted! Ahriman kissed Zahag's shoulders and disappeared. Two black snakes appeared where Ahriman's lips had touched. The snakes could not be removed, as new ones would replace them as soon as they were cut off. All physicians and healers in the realm proved powerless to deal with the snakes. Ahriman appeared again in court as a skilled physician and prescribed a young human brain to be fed daily to each snake to keep Zahak safe from them. Ahriman, hateful of human happiness, had prescribed murdering all humankind. As we see in many Hollywood movies, many villains want nothing but the destruction of the earth and removing all humankind from the face of the earth. Some mythologists believe that the story of snakes growing on Zahak's shoulders come from Mesopotamian myths, such as Ningish Zidda, the goddess of underworld and vegetation, as you see in the image, two snakes grow from Ningish Zidda's shoulders. Some others believe that the name of Zahak comes from the myth Ajidahaka, the demon of drought and volcanoes. Mentioned in Avesta, 
the ancient holy book of Zoroastrians. At the time that Jamshid lost his divine fire, Zahak took the opportunity to attack Iran. Jamshid was defeated, escaped, and remained in hiding for a hundred years. He was finally caught, and on Zahak's order, was cut in half. Then Zahak claimed Jamshid's throne. Zahak ruled as an evil tyrant for a thousand years and killed many innocent young people to satisfy his snakes. One night he dreamed that three warriors attacked, bound and dragged him to Mount Damavan, the volcano near Tehran, as a cheering crowd fell out. The dream terrified Zahak, and he consulted many wise men and dream interpreters. A brave one finally interpreted that Zahak's days were numbered, and a new king, Freydun, would overthrow him. In the meantime, Kave, the black smith, marched into Zahak's palace one day to protest loudly the arrest of his son that was supposed to be killed to satisfy the demonic snakes. Taken aback at Kaveh's fearlessness, Zahak ordered Kaveh's son be released, but asked Kaveh to recognize the king's royal generosity, justice, and benevolence by signing a document already signed by the leaders of the land. Kaveh tore up the document in rage upon reading it and scolded the stunned, cowardly courtiers serving a demonic tyrant. Kaveh stormed out of the court with his son, hoisted his leather apron on the lance, and called upon people to join together to remove the tyrant. People listened, and thus began Kaveh's revolution, and his apron became the legendary national banner called the Rafshe Kavian. Some say the Rafshe Kavian means banner of kings or kings. Some others say Kavian comes from Gavian, which in ancient Persian means life. So the Rafshe Kavian might have meant the banner of life. A brave young man named Freydun, whose father had been killed by Zahak, had already risen to avenge his father. Kaveh, his son, and his followers joined the noble young men as their king, as they recognized the sun-like splendor of divine fire in him. They rode for days and crossed Arvan Rud, Arvan River, now between Iran and Iraq, flowing into the Persian Gulf, to reach Zahak's capital. They conquered the town and the palace and freed prisoners while Zahak and his army were away, busy with conquering other lands. When informed that his palace had been occupied, Zahak and his great army rode to the capital, but were attacked by inhabitants from all corners. Zahak was finally subdued by a blow to the head by Freydun, with Kaveh and his son beside him. Just as Zahak had dreamed, that three men would arrest him as the youngest delivers him the immobilizing blow. He was bound and taken. In Shahnameh, Freydun first wants to kill Zahak, but an archangel named Surush appears saying, Thou shalt not kill him, because you cannot kill evil. You can just limit and chain it. That's why Zahak is bound and taken to a cave under Mount Damavan, the volcano, where he was imprisoned in chains. Then Freydun proceeded to erase all traces of Zahak's tyranny as much as he could. Translation by Faribor's Mukhtari, author. In the lion's shadow, the Iranian Schindler and his homeland in the Second World War.